Hello, welcome to the Craft House Magic Setter Tutorials. My name's Ellie and today I'm going to show you how I do my English paper piecing. So first of all, you need to think about fabrics. This particular fabric I've chosen is some lovely, gorgeous Liberty Tarna Lawn. So it's a lovely, lightweight, soft material, and it's nice and easy to manipulate around the English paper pieces. So this is a lovely option, but you can also use any type of quilting cotton, a nice quality one. So in order to cut out the fabric, I use a rotating cutting mat and a rotary cutter. I like to use a small one just because it's easier to do those shorter edges and get into curves if you are doing curves. And I do have a template for the size of English paper piecing that I'm using. So I can pop that onto the material and just use the rotary cutter to cut it out. But you don't necessarily need one of these. And if you're not going to use this size of English paper piecing very often, um, you can just use a normal ruler and your piece um, and just cut around a quarter of an inch uh, from the edge. But I just find if you're going to do a lot of the same size one, you can use these little templates. This particular one is from Lena Patchwork, and I'll leave a link to that in the description bar down below. I believe I've got the rotating cutting mat from there as well. If you don't like to use a rotary cutter and rotating cutting mat, you can just use a normal pair of scissors. But I like to use the rotating cutting mat. So I'll just put that onto the fabric. With this template, you can actually fussy cut as well, which is really useful. I've just cut the main body of the fabric away so that I can then rotate the mat. I'm just going to cut that corner off. And also, um, some of the shapes I'm using are jewels, which happens to be this same shape. So if you just cut in line with the two sides, missing that last edge off, that'll give you a jewel shape as well. So I'm going to be using two different shapes, the jewel shape and the hexagon in the half inch hexagon sizes. And I've actually picked these pre-cut hexiforms because they're nice and easy to use and you can actually leave these in. They're made out of a material um, that is like woven on one side and there's a slightly fleecy side on the other so you can leave that in your work and it leaves a nice sort of puffy texture um, to your English paper piecing. I wouldn't necessarily use these in a quilt but these are good for, for adding a little bit of texture. You can get pre-cut hexagons as well which are useful because it's really important to get a nice perfectly cut hexagon but this particular piece of fabric I need to be cut in a hexagon so I'm popping my template on there again and taking that last corner off so that's how I cut them out. So we now need to attach our templates to the fabric with the hexaforms if you find the fuzzy side of the material and then pop a little dot of glue on or if you're going to stitch it um, you can just place it onto your fabric. So you need to be careful to try and put it as close to the centre as possible and that glue should just hold it in place. The Soline glue sometimes comes with a blue um, stick but actually the colour disappears with time so you don't need to worry about it uh, marking your fabric or anything. And I'm just folding in each edge of the little hexagon and you could be using little card templates or um, or you could be tacking these so you can do a slightly different method um, but I, I'm just showing you the method that I like to use the most so there we go we've pushed in all the edges and we have our last little hexagon. So I like to use these magnifying headset. <laughs> it does have a little light at the top which you can press the button to um, turn on so it helps you see a little bit better and I've got the highest magnification on here just because I like to be able to really see all of my stitches and I'll leave a link, this is from Amazon, I'll pop a link in the description bar down below. So now I have all my fabrics over my hexaforms ready to sew together and I've got everything I need to do the sewing in my little tray. This is one of those little trays that you can actually open the legs out and it can grip to my leg which is ideal for sewing in front of the television. I picked this up from B&M or Home Bargains or somewhere like that. I think it was only about £5. So a lovely little tray to have and these bits and bobs are all the favourite things that I like to use. So the thread that I use most is this deco bob. Um, it's just a finer thread so that the stitches don't show up so much. I tend to cut a little bit off 
and this thread I then like to put over my magic my thread magic um, to condition it this is just a nice conditioner to stop the knots from occurring and it says it's supposed to protect it as well so that's good I pop it in my needle threader in the position over where it says one and these are the needles that I like to use they're called the black gold needles by Clover and they're like a size 9 applique or sharp needle so I've, I'll leave links to all these things in the description bar down below I pop the needle in just there and then I just need to press one and then I lift it out and it's already threaded for me which is ideal um, I like this needle threader because you can actually thread your needles while it's attached to your work as well which is always good I'm then going to take the end of the thread, wrap it around the needle a few times and then run that to the end of the thread and that will make a like, nice little knot. I don't know if you can really see that because it is so small because of the fine thread. And then I've got my needle ready to sew these together. So what I like to do is with my centre hexagon I'll sew all the way around it, attaching all the ones that are immediately surrounding that centre one and then I'll go back and stitch all the bits in between here and then I've got a florette in the centre and then what I'll do is I'll do sort of the same thing and I'll stitch along all the outside edges um, to join these outer pieces on as well and then I'll go back and join all the bits in between there um, to join it all together so then I've got plans for this piece to make it into a sort of needle case with extra room for bits and bobs so I'm going to do a separate tutorial for that as well so hopefully when that's up I'll pop a link to that in the description bar down below so I've got my thread knotted and I'm going to take the first two pieces um, that I'm going to sew together. I'm going to sew these two edges. Um, what I tend to do, this is my little secret here, is that if I do have two edges that are perhaps one is slightly longer than the other, you can see that pink is very slightly longer, I'll just turn it round and audition um, the best fit because you're bound to have tiny little differences even if you're really careful with putting your fabric onto your hexagon. So I think that one is the best one there. Um, I'm going to put those two together so I'll lift the top hexagon up first and get my thread into position so I'll pop that into the corner and thread my needle so that the knot is now caught into the corner of that hexagon and then I'm just going to double check that's the edge I was going to join yep those two are going to go together and I normally pop a little clip there just to hold that together so I have my thread attached to the right hand side of this front hexagon and I'm going to go into the back hexagon just a couple of millimeters and pull my thread through and then I'm going to come into the front hexagon again in line with where I've just come out of the back one so this is called a ladder stitch now there are other methods of doing this, you can do a whip stitch but I find personally that this stitch works neater for me. It doesn't show hardly at all. I'll go to the back and take a couple of millimetres and to the front. And I'll work my way across the top of the hexagon trying to keep my stitches as even as possible really but and if you pull that thread a little bit that'll pull it all together nicely so whip stitch if you are going to do whip stitch instead I would try both of them out because it's it's strange because some people I know that do a lot of um, English paper piecing prefer um, whip stitch and an equal amount prefer the ladder stitch so do try both of them um, but I like the ladder stitch personally so I've got right to the end I'm trying to um, keep my tension on my thread nicely and then I'm actually going to do a whip stitch on this very corner trying not to go into too far into the hexagon because I find that shows a little bit more 
Um, so I've got a whip stitch there and before the little loop closes I'll put my needle through there and tighten that up and I can take my clip off and have a look at that. So there we go, you can't really see the stitches between um, the two hexagons which is good. So I'm going to put another one on this edge now. So I'm not doing this one yet. I'll just go around here and stitch all the hexagons around the outside of this one first. So I'll put the right sides together. I'll just pop a clip on there just to hold it, just to so I don't drop it when it is initially stitched on. And I go back in and do a little whip stitch over the two corners and I'll actually knot that as well. Every every time I get to a sort of edge I like to do a little knot so that it's nice and secure. Go to the back a few millimetres. A few millimetres in the front. You can see that I'm doing a ladder stitch from on one side and then the other side and working my way right across the hexagon. Trying to keep my tension even. I'm trying not to get my thread caught around the next hexagon either. So I'm trying to keep that tension nice and even. And I've caught my thread over the edge. I'm just going to do the same again, pulling it nice and tight. I'm just going to check that I've got my stitches all nice and neat there. And then I'm going to do a whip stitch knot on the corner just to keep it nice and secure. So when that loop is nearly closed in, I'll pop my needle through it. There we go, that's knotted into place. Um, so you can see when I go back to these side panels I can stitch those together but I'm going to keep going round and round and stitching these to the centre piece. So I'll get on with that and show you what I, how I do the edge pieces. So I've now joined all these petals um, to the centre piece. My thread is still attached here. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start stitching up that side um, because it's already conveniently attached there. So I'm going to put my needle sort of whip stitch style in the back there to pull those two together. Again, exactly the same method as I've just shown you. I'll add a stitch across holding those two pieces together. Making sure your thread doesn't loop on any other of the fabric like it has there. So I'm just putting that into a little bit of a knot at the very end. Um, then hopefully it's nice and neat. So that edge is now joined. So I'm going to finish this off by doing another knot just in the back of one of these hexagons and then burying my threads as well. Because these um, hexaforms are going to stay there I can bury it into the hexaform. Obviously if you've got ones you're going to remove you can just bury it into the seam fabric. So I can now cut my thread for that side and join all these around the edges and then go for the next layer. So now that I've cut
cut my thread I'm going to actually go back in and stitch this side together I thought I'd show you how I bury my thread so I'll go into the corner of this the main center hexagon bury my thread come out um, onto the corner here fold these two pieces neatly ready to stitch together and then again scoop in a couple of millimeters along the top one go into the same point in the one below a couple of millimeters across and then just work my way across as I did before the only difference is as I've buried my thread in the in a different um, hexagon really so I've come to the end and I'm going to do one whip stitch to secure it and then I'm going to check my stitches are all nice and neat that I've got the good tension on it there we go that's good and then I'm going to do a little knot at the back bury my thread um, again because we're using these hexiforms I can bury the thread in the hexiform which makes it easier and I can snip that thread and we've got two of those out of bits done and exactly the same method I'm going to assemble the rest of it and join all these pieces together so I've got six of these dual and then I've got 13 of the standard half inch hexagons one of which is the sort of white with the silvery bit um, as a focal point in the center I'm going to do some stitching on these plainer ones um, to give it a little bit of pizzazz <laughs> So don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see the next video on what I make with this piece of English paper piecing. And you can follow along with me. All the links to things that you need that I've shown you on this video are in the description bar down below. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll try and answer as best as I can. So thank you so much for watching. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!